Hello. This week we were talking about hash tables, and in doing so, we introduced the idea of a hash function. And now a hash function takes in some key, which is usually a string, and it does some sort of manipulation on it in order to get an integer out. I don't think I mentioned this before, but the reason they call it a hash function and a hash table is because it's like a, a metaphor for food. Like if you make a hash of food, you like take the thing and you like chop it up into different parts. Like you might chop a bunch of potatoes and peppers and stuff up and make a hash. And so that's what a hash function does. It takes its input, like I said, often the string and does some sort of chopping it up into pieces and combining it thing in order to get the integer back out. And the one we looked at in particular read in the string and it took the ASCII values of each of the letters, added them together, and then modulus by the table size to make sure it wasn't too big. And that worked okay for the example we saw so far, but it's not always going to work well. And so in this lab, you're going to download a program where that hash function does not do well, and you're going to think about why, and then you're going to develop your own hash function that's going to perform better. So for this, uh, example for this lab, you shouldn't use randomness in your hash function, even though that would work well for spreading the data out, uh, spreading out the hash values really well. Because if you use randomness in the hash function, then you won't be, ever be able to find the thing again. So like if we randomly put something in slot 73, when we go to look up that item, we will have no way of knowing where we put it. So you can't use random. You have to base it somehow on the input you're getting. And for this lab, you shouldn't use Java's built-in string hash code method, which would work well, but we want to experiment with and see about how we could go about writing something similar that would work well as well. So let's go ahead and take a look at the lab. All right, so like I said, the point of this lab is for you to write your own hash function that performs better than the simple one we talked about today in class. Now, writing your own hash function isn't something you're going to have to do terribly often. Most of the time, you will be able to just rely on something that's part of a standard library that somebody else wrote and works well. But I think it's a good exercise to go through so that you can understand the sorts of things that hash functions do and look at the different ways that you can go about making a good hash function. So the program that we're going to be working with is based on this hashtable.java file here. Now this is based on the one we developed in class this week, except that it keeps track of how many collisions occurred when adding items. And then there's this report method that prints that information back out to you. So whenever you have a collision, when you're inserting something, it keeps track of that basically. And it keeps track of the total number of items. Otherwise it's the same. Then we also have this hashlab.java, which basically has a class called product code, which contains a string product code, and then it has a hash code method for it. And so this is the simple hash function we came up with in class that just adds up all of the ASCII values and then returns it back out again. Then inside of main, we make a hash table that maps these product, product codes onto prices, I guess, keep kept track of as double values. Then it inserts 500 products that I just randomly generated, random product code names, all different three letter combinations of letters, and then some random prices along with them. And so it, in doing so, it puts them into a hash table that's size 6,000. So if you think about it, if we have a hash table that's size 6,000 and we have 500 products, there shouldn't be terribly many collisions. You know, sometimes, of course, it's inevitable that we'll have collisions but there should probably be you know, no more than a couple collisions for each item. But when we compile and run this, let's see what happens. All right, so here I have these two files, hash table.java and hash lab.java. You get this warning, that's okay. We, we didn't get rid of that. Then I can go ahead and run the hash lab program. And it prints out that with the 500 items, we had an enormous amount of collisions, 107,000 collisions. That's over 200 collisions per item, which is not really that good. The table was big enough, and so the problem must have been in this hash function that we came up with. So what you should do is you should think about why this hash function is failing so hard and why we're having so many collisions. In doing so, if you're stuck on it and not terribly sure, you can change the hash function so that it prints out the value it's returning before it returns it. And so you can see what hash codes are being generated. And so remember, ideally we would have a uniform distribution, which means that all the numbers between zero and the size of the hash table, which is 6,000 something, should be equally likely to happen. And so see if that's happening or if it's an ununiform distribution of some kind. 
Then when you've figured that out and hopefully understand why, you should revise the hash function to make it spread the data out better. And you can do lots of different things with doing that. Basically, like I said, a hash function takes up the pieces of the input and scrambles them up and does things to them. So you should think about doing like more math operators on those ASCII values and think about how you can be creative to spread the numbers out bigger. Remember, you can't use any randomness, like I said. And also for this, you shouldn't use the built-in string hash code method. Your goal for this is to get less than 2,000 collisions, which would be four collisions per item, which is way better than 215 collisions or whatever it is now. If you want some bonus points for this lab, you can get the number less than 500, which would be just one collision per item. And if you do an especially good job, I'll give you even more bonus points past that. Like usual, if you're stuck on anything for this lab, please just let me know. All right, thanks.